Hi, this is Melanie in Pardesi Reviews, and I'm here to do a discussion of the film Twelfth Fail, starring Vikrant Massey. And I'm joined with Kathy of Cinemondo Podcast again. Um, so I missed this movie when it came out in the yeah. theaters in October, and evidently it was kind of a sleeper hit. Um, yeah. even in India, I think it, it's pretty low budget and yeah, I think the budget was only 20 core and then, wow. uh, no, wait, the budget was even lower than that. And it grossed like, you know, 66 core and, and, yeah. uh, which is, you know, so it was really a sleeper hit. Now the director, um, Vidu Bina Chopra owns his own production company that, so he's been the producer of some really big blockbuster things like three idiots nice. um pk mm. etc um i have not seen his last film was shikara or something like that which i have not seen but um anyway somebody who's been in the business for a very long time <clears throat> and uh, very successful both as a director writer wow. and producer and uh, but this this little sleeper movie now i have seen vikrant masi I would say he was in Dilda Dak Nado, if you remember, he had kind of a minor role as like one of the um the people that Ron Greer finally fix up at the end, like they were gonna be in different arranged oh, marriages, yeah, right. right? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> right. right. And mm -hmm. so and then he did this other little weird kind of Hindi weird Jenny Wood Sunny, which was kind of it was kind of wild. But <laughs> Um, so, but I've never seen him play a role like this. Let's just put it this way. Okay. Right. Like I've never seen him out and out, not really sharing the spotlight with a female co-star, just out and out. This is his completely his movie. And I Definitely was is. really excited for him for that. Yeah. So, um, this has been, this is out in streaming and we both, uh, you know, Kathy saw it and she's like, you really need, you know, you and Amit were both like, you need to watch this movie. It is really good. And I yes. did tear up at the end. I, I like, too. You oh, couldn't oh help it. God. it like, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, if it's not clear the movie's been out since, since October, we're going to talk spoilers. I, I mean, so I didn't know anything about this story. And also the whole construction of an ISP officer. There's nothing yeah. that is really an equivalent True. in the u.s where you have like a civil service exam or anything like that i mean i don't i can't think of anything that would be maybe trying to join the fbi or something like that the right FBI, or, or i almost kind of equated it to like law school and passing the bar it kind okay. of because like, there's like the heavy duty studying and everyone's like did i pass the bar and you can't really become a lawyer until you pass the bar that's the closest i can think that okay. you have this certain level you have to go past and i don't even know if passing the bar heading and do with interviews which i thought was another interesting you know, leap he had to make like my god the serious right. business trying to be an isp officer wow right i mean it, it's a government position but mm -hmm. yet they're wearing a police uh uniform right like so that's why i was kind of saying that yeah i mean you're right somebody could go into the fbi like upper echelons through law school mm -hmm. or you could join uh yeah. you know a government cabinet or something like that because mm -hmm. you've gone to law school and you've made right. you know an impression that way but there's it's more i think you know it comes from when it was run by the english right like yeah. and they had a civil service exam and everything so i think that that's the history of where something like this comes from and why it's so different than america so really when i have seen <clears throat> isp officers in films i've not really understood why is it such a big deal when this guy walks in the room right yeah. to a little police station or whatever and says yeah. okay i'm in i'm in control now right like <laughs> <laughs> like i haven't really i've, I've it, it's like over time seeing all these movies i've kind of gotten but this was one that really showed yeah showed me what someone has to go through and that it's definitely something you know if you have to take an essay test a multiple yeah. essay test in english it's definitely going to skew to people yeah. who have grown up yeah. going to english language schools and more wealthy yeah. you know I, it, you know it's kind of like trying to get into a harvard or something yeah like it's that built here, in right? like bias in a way right. yeah it's like it's interesting because they they you're right they have set it up so that anyone who doesn't already have the money or have the English language skills, like they're just, they're just cut out there's, and they could be good, but then you have those certain levels to go through 
And like you said, Harvard, almost the same way. Like if you don't know if your parent, your father didn't go there, you know, before it becomes this whole weird. Well, uh, I mean, it's the same thing. Like people pay for coaching mm -hmm. to get yeah. into college here. Yeah. And it seemed yeah. like there were whole coaching schools, uh, you know, set up there for people yeah. trying to take these different civil service exams. His girlfriend, totally. Shraddha, um, you know, she was trying to take a different kind of exam mm -hmm. and so, to be a government officer. And so, um, yeah, you have to, but the breadth of knowledge that he had to know, like oh. they're doing something on rocket propulsion when you're going to be a government, like I was just, I was yeah. dumbfounded at, it seemed to have, you had to have not just history or no English, but really a, a breadth of different kinds of knowledge to be able to pass these examinations. Yeah. And like you said, and that was just step one. And then we saw in the film, the bias, when you get to the interview portion, oh like, why is this guy sitting here? <laughs> you know? And they were not even nice to him. Like it was just super rude. Like they, there was no secret after all the work you put in and passing all the exams that that you would fail at that point. It's just no, not good. Yeah. I like what they did um, with the audio there where he was sitting in the waiting room mm, and he that. was like, so freaked out and nervous that he was hearing this buzzing. Yeah, like tinnitus almost. Right. Like, yes. And like he couldn't even hear the person wow. calling his name because he was just so like freaked out. And I thought that was a great way really way to show way. us this guy, you know, this mental state that this guy was in just to walk into the room. Right. You know, I mean, because you could see the difference. Yeah. His girlfriend, when he visits her house. Yeah. It's just probably a regular upper, upper middle class yeah. house, but like this guy was living in a shack or he was living in the flower factory. What, what? Or whatever. I know like, it was, <laughs> and I like people visit, they go, he's like living like in the basement of a flower, and they're like, Where are you studying? There's no light here. He goes, No, I have this. He had this whole little I got setup. This whole you know? I got my little desk up here. I just, I can't stand up in this room, but I'm, I'm just right yeah. over here. I'm, I have to crawl like, everywhere, but it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I can't you know, hear I can't hear you talking because I've had this machine next to my head for well, uh, 15 and like hours all, a day. <laughs> he looked a little crazy down there. You know, the thing that was so great about him was like when we're introduced to him, he just seems like the sweetest, yeah. most like demure, just really just nice. And he just has no killer instinct. Yeah. He has no like grr, like he's gonna beat this thing, you know. And the scene where his grandmother, like he goes to visit his grandmother, she's sitting on the bed, she's all and he's like, what? And she goes, she opened the box. And they open the box and he gives her the money to go to school, which she didn't think he could do. Oh, my God. I almost died. Then after this great lead up to that on the bus, going to where he's going to go. And he wakes up and he goes down to get his bag and it's freaking gone. He has no money. After all that, it was like, oh, it felt like a gut punch because the movie is very light yeah. until then. And also you're like, whoa, this is getting ugly now. Right. And we <laughs> haven't mentioned this is based on a real person. Right. Yeah. This is all right. based on a real person. In fact, I was reading a news article about the guy today. You know, he's like a so. some sort of level commissioner in Mumbai or something. And so um, amazing. And, you know, I mean, like the background that this guy had, you know, he didn't even know what he didn't know. Right. Like he right. had grown up. The teachers would give them the answers to pass the test. He, yeah. did, he what's, That's what he's trying to explain to the people interviewing yeah. him. We didn't know any other way. How was I supposed to know you're not supposed to cheat the when teacher the teachers said it was okay. are doing it? <laughs> exactly. And they write the, the answers on the board. Like, no. <laughs> it know? was so brutal. And I think it was interesting, too, because the easy thing, and I almost was like, dude, just lie. Because I wanted him to get through it. I'm like, if you're going to. And so when he tells the truth, I'm like, oh. Yeah. At, at the same right? time, I'm rooting for him because he's being honest. But you're like. <laughs> You could have just flown on through that interview, but he didn't. He decided he was just, right. and that was his thing, though. He was always honest. It's well, and that came be... came from his father. You see yeah. that he got it from his father, who kept losing positions because he didn't want to just go along with all the corruption. Yeah. And he would, you know, and then so he came by it from his father, seeing yeah. that. But it's also I love that <clears throat> there was one. <clears throat> Sorry, hold on. <laughs> we'll take a little break. <clears throat> There was one ISP officer who helped him right? and that became his hero. Right. And he, and, and I loved the ending scene where he invites that man to his wedding Yes, and who had never known the impact that he had said just by offhandedly said, don't cheat anymore. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, cause the guy's like, how can I be you? Don't cheat. 
Don't cheat. And so then that became like his motto for his entire life. I'm not going to cheat. I'm just going to. Oh, my God. But what he had gone through, mm. I, it was such an uplifting movie. And Vikram Massey, like you said, he just has that demeanor about him. He's just such a nice sweetheart that you're, yeah. you can't help but root for, root for him from the beginning. Yep. I'm, I'm sure maybe the real person himself is probably a complex person and maybe not the complete saint that is portrayed in this movie. <laughs> no, exactly. But I'm sure he did go through all of the, you know, all of these things, right? Like how can you, it's almost kind of like uh, if you, if you wrote the script, people would say it's, it's too unbelievable, but I bet yeah. it, all those things really did happen. Exactly. You're like, right. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And, I, you know, it was kind of interesting because you're following his journey and then he meets the girl and she seems way out of his league. Sorry. Right. Does, right. Way. Yeah. And but she saw something in him because she's like she's not used to seeing someone who's so driven and honest and earnest. She sees a lot of people who are like Griffin in the system. Like he's just totally like, you know, got to get it, finish it, you know. But she saw that gentleness. And I thought that was really cool that she wanted that, you know. So she was really yeah. encouraging to him. And and when he was just failing, failing and and she's like, when she finally tells him that she loves him, and it's just like, oh, like, oh my God, I get goosebumps. It's so sweet. I mean, I feel like I was falling for every little tweak they were doing. I knew they were manipulating me, but I was I know, totally I know. on board for it. I wanted them to do that. So I, I knew every beat that was going to happen. I mean, the ending wasn't a surprise, but when it, it happened, for some reason, it was almost surprising. And it, it gives you this emotional boost that you just yes. aren't expecting. So the I love you thing was so like, oh my God, I'm going right, to Because the movie could have ended mm -hmm. just when we saw him pass the exam. Yeah. He'd reunited with a friend mm -hmm. who he'd encouraged, why oh, don't you I just buck your father and, and go for it, you know, yeah. into TV and whatever. And so they could have ended the movie right there. That's right. But then the fact that they, and I was waiting for, I'm like, this is based on the wrong person, person and they they also had during the credits showing us the pictures of the real guy's wedding that. was shrouded. Oh my god! So <laughs> but yeah, so just but the the oh. the moment he meets the officer who started everything from the beginning. Oh yeah! Oh my god! Was great! Yeah. What a great scene! Oh good. So you 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 go along the the closest thing. I'm trying to think of another movie like this. I can't think of it. I mean, it's mostly kind of college life, but he's not really on campus. You know, it's not like how we see college movies, but it has that vibe. A bunch of young people, they're all trying to pass their exams. There's kind of yeah. a group that are kind of like, you know, trying to support each other and move through it. But he was always kind of a little bit of the outsider from that group. And then the one friend of his who didn't make it. And then yeah. he's really mad at, at um, Manoj for, for actually passing. And he couldn't really quite get over that. And so it felt a lot like that. So if you're looking for kind of a movie that's kind of like the the college kids trying to, you know, pass the exams or whatever, it is totally accessible on that level. Right. But then it gives you that whole extra level yeah. of uh, the culture is different. The struggle is different. You know, just everything about it felt fresh. And even though it was a, an old trope, it felt really, yeah. I felt really renewed by it. And so I can yeah. see why people kept saying, you guys got to watch 12 Fail. I'm like, what the hell does 12 Fail mean? I know, because no, the, the title itself is kind of off-putting. You're weird. like, what, what is that? I mean, <laughs> and so, I mean, it's it's key to it is that when he gets, old, he's gone all the way through oh. everything. And the fact that everyone in his school was failed in the yep. 12th grade because of the cheating. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then he just went on to college anyway, yep. you know, and got his BA, but yet they're like, wait, you have this blemish on your record. What the hell? You can't, you can't. You be failed an officer 12th now. Grade. It's like 12th grade. <laughs> Nobody cares about 12th grade. <laughs> like, Get out of here. <laughs> oh my God. So it was really frustrating. Cause like you said, you felt like he had this demerit against him that was counting, you know, impacting his future life. That was before he even knew what the hell he was doing. He was a kid and it wasn't even his fault. They were, they were kind of passing right. the kids through. So that was, that was a nice little level of stakes. You know, like, is he going to pass or not pass? Will your, you know, your, your past come back to haunt you? It's like, uh, I kept, like, I kept in my mind. I'm like, okay, wait, he only has four chances. So what's the 12th fail? What is the, I know I kept saying, well, right? well, what like, <laughs> how many times can he fail? <laughs> if you're only allowed that far. Yeah. It was very confusing. You only find that out at the very end what 12th fail means. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I kind of forgot about the title once I realized, okay, this is the last time you can take the exam. This is it, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. 
but it was a really it was really an endearing movie and i really enjoyed yeah. it in, on a lot of levels so it and i i even liked like the parents trying to rein her in and she's all like i have to go see him and they're like no no i have to that was so sweet when she finally shows up i was like oh she, got, she made it <laughs> there were a lot of those yeah, moments i mean it like, seemed it seems like right. the the movie is from kind of the perspective of the best friend who betrays them um who ends up going into you know television reporting yeah. Or, yeah. or whatever that was funny and, <laughs> well i mean it was like it was interesting like you know you you have this guy who can't, who can't even afford a meal and has been starving for the last couple of days you're like yeah i'll pay for your train ticket just come with me well, yeah. who does that like nobody that's why I was so nice. This was a universe in which people were actually really nice and honorable. <laughs> like, right. Okay. Right. I mean, I love that he was just, you know, he, he asked the restaurant owner after sitting outside and smelling all the, can I, can I just do any kind of work to pay? And the guy just like, here, sit down and have your dinner and then won't accept payment. And I love how he's like arguing with him. No, I have to do something. I can't just take this charity. <laughs> oh, like, no. So cute. I know. It was really <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it's one of those, like, you just want to watch something that makes you feel good. And, you know, you see the struggle and it makes you feel better. Like, think, does anyone who's struggling, you see that and you go, okay, he, he had a hard struggle. He made it because he didn't give up. And the main thing right. is like, don't give up. I mean, that is the clear message on this is that you can make it. You just have to keep trying. Well, and I, I think part of the message is, I mean, there's still caste discrimination yes, and he, and, and, and he was experiencing that in that final interview the mm -hmm. lead uh, questioner interviewer yeah. was the one that was so biased. Like, what are you even doing sitting here in front of me? Oh, he was you such know? an asshole. God. Right. And I love that it was the woman sitting next to him or, you know, there was a woman saying, well, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's call him back in. And then I can't remember if it was the woman or the man who said, if we don't pass him, then what is this whole process even for? Exactly. Right. Like he came in and he was honest. No, he was honest. He he exposed like some corruption he wanted to fix and he had a plan. Like he wanted he wanted to do it so he could go in and fix that cheating thing. And they were like, No, you cheated. I said, No, wait, he's trying to fix it. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it was terrible. But when she said, wait outside, I'm like, Oh, there's still a chance. <laughs> there's still a chance. Oh, I keep know. going. But when he walked in and there were people just looking down at the table, I'm like, Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> but that was great. I mean, I kind of expected he would make it because it's just that kind of movie. But you're still well, like a little bit on the edge. Like, is he going to make it? Or is it going to be a message about failing and still being okay with it? I <laughs> couldn't decide. I mean, I, I feel I felt like we were in the hands of a master filmmaker that mm -hmm. knew the beats yes. to keep us emo emotionally invested and to give us the payoff that we wanted at the yeah. end. Yes. And and so, you know, I just enjoyed the process for that. Like I am in good hands here, right? Yes. This, this guy is taking me on this journey and I'm really invested in this guy's totally. story. So totally. it was, yeah, it was really good. So thank you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> for forcing you to watch this amazing film. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think most of uh, Vikrant Masi I was familiar with mm. and I felt like the guy, I don't know, uh, the guy that was the uh, gory, I've seen him in something, but I don't. Yeah. Some of those people were definitely familiar. I just didn't. Know. It's familiar faces, but yeah. I don't know from what. And yeah. the shroud of the girlfriend, uh, then wife. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that I have seen her before. Um, yeah. I'm looking at the, her past work and it's nothing that I've seen. Okay. So right. um, Meta Shankar is her name. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it was kind of nice because it was some fresh faces for yeah. me too. And that was nice too that I could. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen so many things that Vikrant Masi has done where I'm like, oh, yeah, he's doing a shtick. Like, I mean, if you see yeah. Ron Veer in some, something, it's it's Ron Veer, right? Yeah, like, it's what you want. Yeah, he gives you what you want, but he's going to always be that. I mean, some stars kind of transcend their characters. I feel like these people disappeared into their characters. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. And yeah. that's what's nice about, like, fresh talent that, you know, can bring the, bring the performance because you're not fixated on the star who's the star you know and, you know. Yeah, so you did feel like you're really watching almost a documentary. Like I feel like I was really just watching people do this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It was very, very, very nice viewing. I really liked it. Right. So it is playing on Hulu in the United States, which I think means hot star mm. in India. Can't recommend it highly enough. Thanks to everyone who's been recommending yeah. it to us and urging us to watch it. 
because we thoroughly enjoyed it. And thank you again for joining me, Kathy. You yeah. can find on uh, her her uh, you know YouTube channel, the Cinemata Podcast. We frequently are back and forth on each other's channels, working together. Yeah. And um, you can find us on Twitter. Yes, yeah, still. <laughs> <I'm RTCYT. laughs> And I'm on Threads, Blue Blue Sky, and Instagram at Pradesi Reviews. So please do subscribe to both of our channels so you can see us interact. (laughs) You want that. You want more of that, I'm sure. And and if you have suggestions, even like, you know, um, older films, we're trying to also go back and see some, because a lot of people are having these great films coming out, but we haven't seen some of their previous work. So we're always interested in in your suggestions on what we should watch. It's initially new. So. How long have you been watching Indian films now, Kathy? Because like it's a year and a half. Okay, that's what I was going to guess. I was like, I know mm-hmm. it's over a year, so it's a yeah. year and a half, and Still we have been do- <laughs> yeah, we've been doing a series of older films. Yeah. And if there's other films like this one mm-hmm. that we've missed, I mean, at, mm-hmm. so it's two two different suggestions: films that yeah. we may have missed that are hidden gems, that's and right. um, older films that you think. Uh, Kathy needs to see. I mean, I may have missed it too. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I was surprised, you know, that you hadn't seen some of the ones I was suggesting. You're like, nope, I haven't seen them. I'm like, no way. <laughs> so, I mean, way. I can't. I can't see everything. <laughs> you have seen everything. You are the queen. <laughs> I haven't seen everything yet. I still have. Mother India, still haven't seen. <laughs> See, but, you know, sometimes you just want to leave some of the big, you know, really good ones just to have in case you need them. <laughs> I mean, I am that way. There's one Shah Rukh Khan movie where he has a, I don't think, I think he's more of a supporting role. It's called Shakti the Power. Mm. So basically all of his big roles, I think I have seen, but I have like, that one is sort of like a break glass in case of emergency because I absolutely need to see a new true film. There'll be one there in case I need it. Just in case it's there when you need it. (laughs) So we're asking you for more of those. (laughs) Some of these just in case movies. All right. Thanks again, Kathy. Thank you. Bye. Bye.